All right. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, quick White House update. How many of you heard of the Abraham Accords from this past week? Woo! This is a historic week right before we start the new year. Friends, this could not get any bigger for, for us to launch this new year, except for the other nations that are about to come in. I won't comment on it, but it's about to get bigger. Buckle your seatbelt. We have a couple of pictures, I think. Let's see what we have. Somebody tell me no if we don't. Yes? No? There they are. Look at that. Somebody, somebody asked me that day, where'd you get those pictures so fast? I said, from my phone. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Pascual, where are you? And Edmana, his wife, beloved, stand up, would you? They were there at the White House. His, La Pastora prayed at the RNC, national television. She led us in prayer. They're the leaders, the president with Benjamin Netanyahu, the leader of uh, Bahrain and uh, the United Arab Emirates. You know, I was just a few feet away, snapped a picture. There you go. Do we have any other pictures? Or is that it? That's enough. I mean, it's okay. That's enough. All right. That's a quick update. All right. Let's go to our, the new slide I gave you uh, from Rabbi Netanel ben Yeshaya. All right. Follow along. read this to you. Rabbi, Rabbi Natanel ben Yeshaya, one of the greatest rabbis of the Yemenite Jewry, who lived about 600 years ago, he wrote in his book called From the Light of Darkness, a commentary on, on the Torah about events occurring in the year that ends 5780 and about the year that begins 5781 as follows. As is well known, as stated in the dream of Daniel the fourth, and I'm not sure about this stuff, the fourth kingdom, I didn't study it, the fourth kingdom of the kingdom of Edom, and it ends in the year 5780. Then it seems that the rule of the nine months will begin, as stated in the Gemara. I'm not sure about that. And then afterwards, it will be the time of redemption and the kingdom of heaven forever. He spoke about this 600 years ago, about 5781 being the year of redemption. <laughs> 600 years ago. Over 200 years ago, a rabbi said that um, 5781 would represent the day of salvation for Israel. He called it the year of Messiah. One rabbi said, and again, I'm not predicting the return of the Lord. I mean, I'm not giving dates. I'm just telling you what some rabbis were saying and were stirred about prophetically hundreds of years ago about what we're entering into. One said it'll be the last uh, Rosh Hashanah without Messiah because of a big redemption coming. You know what that finally means? We'll, we'll see, right? By God's grace, we'll be alive in a few months. We'll see. One rabbi said, again, hundreds of years ago, 5780 will be a very hard year. 5781 will be the year where the poor man is raised from the garbage. <laughs> Another rabbi, hundreds of years ago, wrote, 5780 will be a satanic year, but 5781 will be a year of redemption. Come on now. All this leads me to say my first point. Number one, we get our slide going. We must get around a prophetic company this year. More than ever. I know you know this, but now we have to press in and, and specifically be sure we're aligned with a prophetic company. Corporately and personally. All right? The Lord is speaking, and he's speaking quickly. Some of you saw the graphic that was up here moving. There was one with little circles, and it was all red last night. I saw it again this morning. Look at that. Woo! Ho! Ho! I never scream like that, but let's enjoy that. Oh, my gosh. 
Look how fast that's moving. That represents prophetically a speeding up of the blood in the body of Christ. The blood in the body of Christ is speeding up. It's flowing. It's flowing in fresh ways. The arteries and the veins are dilating. The speed of the blood flow is increasing, says the Lord. Whoo, I could stop right there. That's enough. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The reason I know this is I was blessed. I was given a medical device this year of all years. I was just blessed with this. That if FDA approved, that speeds up your blood flow. Athletes are using it and they're crushing their competition. Crushing it. Unbelievable. They put this device on horses and it's as if they just warmed up for 30 minutes. That's the science. Are you with me? I'm just saying that's a picture of what is happening right now with the blood of Jesus in his body. Now listen to me, I I heard a a certain political leader say, oh, I'm going to listen to the science. I'm going to listen to the science. Got to listen to the science. I say, hey, buddy, listen to the science of the unborn children. The science is they feel pain. The science is they are human beings. There's no two human beings. There's no one human being that has two sets of chromosomes. Those are two people. Listen to the science. Now, I'm saying that over this nation right now. I'm prophesying over the nation right now. I am saying, United States of America and every other nation, listen to the science of the unborn. They are human beings. They have an angel that sees the face of God every day. Repent of this murderous sin and let the redeeming and forgiveness of the Lord come to the land. The blood of the innocents is crying out louder than ever. You heard Pastor Heidler say last night, the number one cause of death in America is abortion. Listen to the science, politicians. Listen to the science, you pro-abortion people. Be delivered from the deception you're under now in Jesus' name. Get among the company of prophets quickly. I'm going to go very quickly. Listen. Mark 4, 24, Jesus said, take care what you listen to. Get in the company of prophets and listen. Jesus said, be careful what you're listening to. Proverbs 13, 20 says, he who walks with wise men will be wise. Get in that company of prophets this year. Number two, you've got to embrace God's word for 2021. You've got, listen, this is mission critical, all right? So many believers that are open to prophetic ministry, prophetic counsel, get prophetic words, and they go in a notebook on the shelf and, and, you know, listen, write them down. I know this sounds kind of archaic and kindergarten-like, but no, write them down, carry them with you, read them over and over and over, meditate on the prophetic words of the Lord that are corporate and personal, Okay? It's critical to it. We've got to embrace. I've told you before in this setting how the Lord shifted my life forever into an, at my apostolic era in the year 2020. I didn't tell Chuck what the word was. I told him just two years ago when I was here, um, 18 years afterward. And I just said to Chuck, Chuck, I'm having trouble embracing a certain word. Didn't tell him what the word was. He immediately shot back. To not fully embrace the call of God on our life would be to not embrace God himself. And I put it down for you because I have the email and it's in the inside cover of my three ring binder prophetic journal. In the cover of the page, that uh, that printout from the year 2000 is right there. Signed Chuck Pierce, 428 p.m. Monday, April 10th, the year 2000. Why do I do that? Because the word of the Lord is active. Getting that word changed my life. Embracing the word changed my life. It's imperative that we get in the company of prophets and embrace the word of the Lord for this year. It's imperative. How do we embrace it? Three things quickly. Speak it out loud, Brother Robert Heidler. 
fight for it, and then declare victory. Those three things. Let's read this together. Speak it out loud, fight for it, declare victory. God told Jeremiah, I'm making my words fire in your mouth. This year, the Lord has given these companies of prophets that you're getting in words of fire. The Lord says, is not my word like fire? Listen, his eyes are fire. His tongue is fire. His breath is fire. Our God is indeed a consuming fire. Somebody say fuego. Fuego. Fall on me. 